Here's a vintage National National Panasonic Matsushita uh, vacuum tube TV. This is all tubes with the exception of both tuners. Uh, tuners are solid state. And this is a model TP36NU. Uh, I cannot find much information on this. The only other set like this that I found online is listed on Radio Museum and belongs to a Portuguese guy also. Although everything here is written in German. And the control labels are in English, which I guess was standard for exported things out of Japan, I don't know. Interesting thing about this, and the reason why I picked it up, is because it's really rare. You don't see a lot of Japanese, in fact you don't see any Japanese tube TVs around here. We have lots and lots of this type of set with this style of knobs and this style of cabinet from national and from other brands but they are all solid state uh, this one is almost all tube i'm going to call it an all tube set although the tuners are solid state like i said uh, supposedly this works the the seller advertised it with the raster displayed on the screen <clears throat> we have UHF and VHF and I, I have already popped off the back it's a really cheesy looking thing uh, it's cool and probably is reliable because we have lots of these polyester capacitors we have a couple of these ceramic tubulars paper ceramic tubular paper caps or whatever this is these do fail but there are not many of them but anyway it's a cheap Looks cheap, cheesy, and nasty, but it's cool. It's a really cool set. A look at the size of that speaker. It's, it's look looks like a speaker from a pocket radio or something. And that cute little little uh, audio output transformer. <laughs> it's just the size of my thumb. It's really ridiculous. From what I have seen on the schematic, this is an auto transformer for stepping down 220 to 110. Yet here are a little vertical output transformer, also extremely small. Another inter interesting thing about this is the CRT is a 16 inches not 17, 16 inches and it's a T40-21 cannot find any information on this but it says here that it's a 4.2 volt 450 milliamp CRT which I have never seen before never heard of and it says here Matsushita Bildrohre which means picture tube come on thing uh, crap yeah Matsushita picture tube it's a mixture of mixture of English with German and pretty weird got another German warning of some sort I 
I got the cheap cheap looking IF transformers over there you have a compactor on tube here probably horizontal output and damper flimsy high voltage cage sort of, sort of thing so yeah I like this uh, this is a printed finish you cannot clean this with almost anything uh, some soap and water and that's all because if you use any detergent or cleaner here it will wipe off the paint I might try and clear coat this uh, I got here the circuit diagram we'll be taking a look at at it together then I'm going to take it up into the house and fire it up and see if it works all right so here at the top we got our audio section we have one IF amplifier we have another tube which is the audio detector then we got our volume control and our audio output single-ended pento tube we got our audio output transformer we have an earphone jack which is something that it's a little bit weird on tube type TVs I don't think I've ever seen tube TV with an earphone jack, especially a 3.5 millimeter type. Interesting. So very minimalistic audio section, only one IF amp, no tone control, uh, very small speaker, really minimalistic cost saving kind of deal. As far as video goes, we have only two IF stages. One, two. Most TVs that I work with, they have at least three, sometimes even four. We got here our germanium diode video detector, video amplifier tube. And here is very interesting. They tied the G1 to ground and all the CRT bias is done via the cathode. So uh, B supply, the, the B voltage is directly connected to the plate of the video amp. So our video amp doesn't have any bias regulation. Our contrast control does not change the video amp bias like on most TVs. Our video amp is always working at full speed, full throttle, and our contrast control simply shunts the video signal that outputs through the plate, it shunts it. So it's simply like a, just like a volume control on, a, on an audio amplifier. After the contrast control regulates the, the, the video signal, we have a coupling capacitor. So that coupling capacitor removes the DC that is present at the plate. And after that, we need to inject DC again to bias the CRT. So we have our brightness control again acting on here. So very interesting, weird circuit, probably to reduce component count. Very simple, minimalistic thing. Usually our brightness control controls voltage of G1 and contrast control controls the bias of the video amp on most TVs that I've worked with and I've never seen anything like this. Another interesting thing is that the focus is connected to the secondary of the vertical output or maybe not. Maybe that's for the retrace suppression. 
I'm not sure about that. Yeah, that's gotta be the retrace suppression, so not sure how this thing focus. Maybe it doesn't have any focus pin. Pretty weird. Yeah, that's gotta be the retrace suppression. But usually it's connected both to the vertical and to the horizontal. And it's connected to G1, so uh, maybe it's for the focus. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Anyway, let's move on. AGC stage is only a triode, nothing else. Sync separator, another triode. They call it the sync clipper, which is basically the same the same thing. Our vertical is a multi vibrator circuit. They say here oscillator and output, which is correct, but they are both oscillators because we have the plate connected to the grid and then this plate connected back to this grid. So this is actually a multi vibrator oscillator. And this tube here also acts as the output. Pretty standard, no big deal here. We have only one linearity control. Some TVs that I work with, they have three linearity controls. This only has one. Probably controls the top of the picture only. The vertical section here does not appear to use the the boost voltage, or maybe it does. Oh yes, it does. There's a takeoff here, and it connects to there. Okay. Next, horizontal stage, phase detector diodes. Another interesting thing here is that we don't have a horizontal hold potentiometer. The horizontal hold knob on the back of the set directly controls the the frequency coil which is not a great idea to be tweaking a coil lots of times usually the coil is a preset and then we adjust the potentiometer for the horizontal hold on most TVs here's our horizontal output and damper this is a single tube compactron tube I've never seen one of those tubes in my life, it's the first time because I only work with what I have around here and we don't have American stuff here or Japanese stuff Selenium high voltage rectifier pretty standard this section here so got here our filament string, auto transformer, we have two tapping, two different tappings, oh no we don't, so one side of the plug goes straight to chassis, the other side goes to the transformer then we have 120 volts output for the single wave rectifier we have a choke and it feeds the circuitry of the TV then we have here a what's this 92 volts tapping for the filament string yeah super weird really really weird 92 volts not sure why they didn't use the 120 volt tapping and put a big power resistor there they were trying to save costs and they put extra windings on the transformer weird I guess I guess they didn't put extra windings because they just tapped in the middle of this winding so yeah anyway 
ignoring the tuners it's a very basic compact simple and crude circuit not sure how it's going to perform not expecting any miracles in picture quality and sound quality but we'll see I am also curious to know what year this is because it looks like a solid state TV it's got the typical look of our 1970s solid state TVs early 70s solid state uh, it even has the 3.5 millimeter earphone jack so yeah probably was a low cost TV at the time I don't know anyway let's get it inside the house apply a signal and, and power it up and see what it does Horizontal hold. Not getting anything. CRT is weak. Nothing new in this part of California. What's changed is the demand. For years, our best urchins were processed and shipped abroad to restaurants in Japan. Changing appetites and the work of entrepreneurs like Harry and Steph are ensuring that these precious animals are finding customers here on American soil. Everyone's image of Southern California. I mean, this is Gordon Ramsay. Every time we cook in this incredible kitchen, give it your all. Start those first 15 minutes faster. There's your around you, the buzz. Order, what you don't need, get rid of, and then get that clear perspective of what you're doing. You have to show me and show the contestants where you guys are in this final nine. Okay. This is a really a moment to state your claim. We both had ups and downs, and I think we're in a good point. You two are basically listening to trajectory. So Very soft to the next picture. Level. Okay. It is so motivating to have this one-on-one -on -one with Joe. That's what really makes it all worthwhile. Maybe we get a surf in, yeah. too. Cool. Very soft. A brand new season. Say yes to the dress Lancashire tonight. All your favorite. Deus com a nova presente. 24 de outubro, Coliseu do Porto. Sempre. 
Yeah. You and I are walking out of here like we're all personal. 